a decade to 20 years, right, worth of technological adaptation or adoption rather shrunk down into like six months. And so people like my grandparents, maybe your grandparents, maybe your parents, or just that one aunt who's extremely skeptical of putting anything on the internet because they're going to take her identity or something. Um, these people who are participated in traditions of Black Friday shopping, uh, they've been forced to shop online for the past six months. I'm going to talk about some impactful paid media strategies. Previously, we talked about a lot of organic measures and Megan briefly talked about some paid tactics and overall messaging, but uh, I'm going to go over specifically my strategies that I use with my clients, but a little bit about me. I'll breeze through this one. Um, I grow my passion and my mission is growing businesses through creative and profitable and paid media strategies. I'm a paid media strategist. I use Google ads and Facebook ads in order to scale businesses, primarily e-commerce um, and also some uh, education based companies. Today, I'll mostly be talking about Facebook, though. Uh, some more about me. I've managed advertising accounts for both enterprise level and smaller direct to consumer brands. I previously worked with Damon John from ABC Shark Tank and I managed his company's digital marketing department. It was stressful. Uh, I generated over 15 million in revenue uh, for my paid media clients recently, specializing, like I mentioned before, e-commerce and digital products. So as you know, and as Megan briefly you know, touched on, this holiday season is huge for, absolutely huge for advertisers. And I think you guys understand why. Uh, more people than ever will be shopping online from the safety and comfort and of their couch this holiday season, right? These are absolutely unprecedented times. Uh, it's obvious that there will be a huge shift from physical sales to online sales, right? Just because of all of uh, the guidelines presented, all of everything that's going on, all the COVID. So you won't really be seeing this. This is, this is pandemonium. This is crazy. It's so much germs. It's disgusting at this point. I can't see that anymore. I'm going to pause it. Um, <laughs> that's not really happening this year. Uh, so basically a decade, uh, just to go into a little bit more detail, a decade to 20 years, right? Worth of technological adaptation or adoption rather shrunk down into like six months. So this forced uh, consumer behavioral changes. And so people like my grandparents, maybe your grandparents, maybe your parents, or just that one aunt who's extremely skeptical of putting anything on the internet because they're going to take her identity or something. Um, these people who are participated in traditions of Black Friday shopping, uh, they've been forced to shop online for the past six months, right? So they've been forced to adapt. So that over there, should, or that, in, just taking that into account should really mean uh, that we're going to see a great Q4 for e-commerce and online sales as a whole. So cool, interesting stat here. Adobe predicts that U.S. online holiday sales will total $189 billion, shattering all previous records with a 33% year-over-year increase. And that is equal to two years growth in just one season. It's crazy. So I'm going to go over my basically my playbook that I'm using with all of my clients, specifically in e-commerce and some online uh, educational clients. And we'll go over teasing uh, sales and building hype, testing audiences, crafting a great offer, leveraging omnichannel approaches, uh, and retargeting the playbook, essentially. Um, so teasing and promo, so building hype. Um, we talked about holiday gift guides previously. Um, that's a great way to kind of build this traffic early. And, you know, if we're going to incorporate paid into that, this is something that you know, I've already started on. I think there's a way to pop on this, you know, everyone, it's a weird time. So I think you can just start now at least, or, you know, tomorrow, next week, whatever it takes to start. Um, building traffic early or buying traffic early with more awareness type campaigns. Um, you do this by sharing uh, your followers or showing your followers a preview of the type of sales you'll be offering, just giving them a heads up, like this is what's in store, you know, get your wallet ready, essentially promoting an early access to those who sign up to your email list. Um, this is a great way to even build up your email list. And I'll talk later about retargeting, but you can retarget everyone in your email list, specifically in that list that uh, followed that campaign. Um, this is an example of what Steve Madden did, I think, in 2017. And like I mentioned before, and like Megan and I think Natalie mentioned before, just promoting your holiday gift guide. And now testing audiences. When testing audiences, uh, this is a strategy that I use just not for the holidays, but just all year round, essentially. So specifically for Facebook, like if, if anything goes over your head, please throw me a question or just shoot me an email. Um, 
for Facebook specifically, my strategy is I'll run CBO campaigns testing six to eight audiences. CBO, if that you know sounds like gibberish to you, there's two kinds of ways you can manage, manage budget for Facebook on the ad set level or on the campaign level. And when you manage on the campaign level, you're essentially leveraging Facebook's machine learning. So I'll just run usually CBO campaigns um, and I'll start broad. So I will target interest space, maybe lookalike audiences of past purchasers. And then from there within each uh, ad set, I'll test between four to six ads within each audience. And a pro tip, uh, a lot of people right now, a lot of advertisers, I don't know if you guys have heard this, but in my community, I've just heard this a ton. People are complaining a lot about lookalike audiences and how they're not working. Um, by the way, a lookalike audience is essentially a segment of people uh, that you basically give over to Facebook and they shoot out a list of people that are very similar to that original audience. Um, a lot of people are saying that these lookalike audiences are no longer performing well, but I have a pretty cool tip here. I actually, if you use Shopify or any like e-commerce backend, I'll export a list of people who have purchased um, and I'm trying to sift out people who have the highest lifetime value, meaning that they may be purchased over two times. I'll segment that list and then I'll upload that specific, that hotter warm uh, audience, that more, um, yeah, I said it hot audience, audience um, over to Facebook and create a lookalike audience based on that. And then you can break that down like over the past seven days, 30 days, depending on how much data you've built up. You need at least a thousand, by the way, for a lookalike audience. Another pro tip for refining testing or whatever advertisers like to call or marketers in general optimizing. Uh, a lot of people, uh, a mistake that they make is that they try to test multiple things at once, and then they get confused and they're just like, oh, what's working, what's not working. So you need controls uh, and you need to understand what exactly is moving the needle. So for example, if I'm testing an audience, I know that's a winner, that in and of itself becomes the control. And then from there, we know that performance uh, is if it's getting better or if it's getting worse, or if like conversions are going down or conversion rates going down, CPA is going up, cost per acquisition. Uh, it's going to be because of the creative that we're testing, uh, just because the audience segment is that control. Creating compelling offers. Now, I think this is probably the most important part, and targeting is extremely important, uh, but targeting is important always. But when it comes to holiday season, creating a compelling offer is extremely important just because now everyone's in this buying mindset and they actually want a sale. You know, I think Megan had mentioned that people are kind of pinching pennies and yeah, so they're looking, they literally held out just for this. So give them a sale. And I would recommend, and what I see perform best year over year really is like no less than 20%. Um, also, I think Megan also talked about this, no coupon codes then offer site-wide discounts if you can. The reason why is because you wanna reduce friction. You don't wanna add an extra layer. You know, adding an extra layer to anything, it's just, it's just increases the probability that they're not gonna convert, right? Bundle offers, so this is something I'm currently testing with a couple of clients. Um, for example, this is, a, this is an example of Axe Bat. Uh, they, this is a, they put together a, a bundle of their top performing bats along with uh, some kind of bag that holds all their equipment and all that good stuff. And then they offer a discount if you buy all that together. So what's really cool with that is you actually increase your lifetime value. You increase your lifetime value, you increase your revenue, you increase your profit, ideally. Um, an example that I'm doing, I have a client who sells electric standing desks. So just given the climate, we're running um, a bundle deal on and creating the ultimate work from home station. So they also sell accessories, right? So we're selling a, a electric standing desk along with a mat, good for your knees, by the way, and um, a computer chair. And bundling that all together, you know, letting the, the user know that they're saving $250 if they buy all of this. Like I said, increase at, increases average order value, increases profit, increases revenue. Gifting. Um, Megan talked about this too, like gifting now, people are buying earlier now more than ever because of shipping times. So a lot of people are in the market to buy gifts now for their loved ones. And there's also the added kind of, what do you call it? Like pressure, I guess, 
they feel guilty that they can't actually see their loved ones because of the restrictions. So now more than ever, people are looking to give gifts. And if you can make your product or your service, whatever it is, giftable, you can do that through gift cards. Um, you can also make sure that your products are ready to be gifted. Like Amazon does this great thing. You just click something on, you click, a, you toggle something on and you add, you pay like an additional, like what, $5 and they ship it over with wrapping paper and a thank you note. So if you could do something like that, you definitely win this holiday season. Um, here are just some examples of some ads. Like I said, you can just shoot me an email. Um, I have a, a ton more, like a swipe file. Um, this is over here on the left is just an example of what I'm running for my standing desk clients. And it's just very simple um, call to action or not necessarily a call to action here, but just promotion stacking. You get $180 off plus free shipping. Like who doesn't like deals on top of deals? Um, Steve Mannon's already running sales right now. I got hit with this one. Um, also Casper. Um, this is, this one plays. Oh. Well, like I said, just shoot me an email and I'll send you actually like video files. Um, another, some other ideas also for holidays, you don't have to, um, Megan kind of talked about this and it can sound a little salesy in a way, but it's the truth, you know, like buy now before we run out of stock. You could just be straight up and I see that all the time. Uh, buy now before we run out of stock and it's completely true. You know, you're not lying in any kind of way. It builds urgency. Uh, people, like I said, they want to get their gifts now. They want to get ahead of the curve. Um, also, if you start now or start promoting now, if you guys are ready for that, um, just kind of zigging when everyone's zagging, everyone's going to launch in like two weeks. If you get an early start and kind of just, you know, I think um, Steve Madden's doing this. So is Casper. They're just like, hey, get started early. Like we're promoting now, you know, like, uh, we want you to start saving now. And so like they kind of zig when everyone's zagging and that's a great way to stand out because everyone's promoting, everyone has a 30% uh, sale. So how do you differentiate yourself? And now an example for Christmas, um, this one is uh, obviously, if this is authentic to your brand, charity, like a charity approach. So you can really promote the fact that like during Christmas time in the spirit of giving 10% of our sales go to X charity. Obviously, hopefully that's very authentic to your brand. That's the idea. Um, but just an idea, idea there that, that I had like right before this presentation, I wrote down. Um, leveraging omni-channel approaches. So the other day, um, earlier this week, uh, Facebook did this crazy thing and basically disabled like 70% all of my accounts. It, it happened to everyone, all advertisers, all of their accounts were banned. It was, it was crazy. Facebook didn't even issue like some kind of apology letter. They just, they're just like, oh, we did that. Um, so that just drove home that uh, with my clients and, and my clients were telling me like, we just need to diversify our channels and make sure that we're at least testing 10% or 20% into uh, Snapchat or Pinterest, whatever makes sense for your brand, given your, you know, your brand's demo. Um, just a, another pro tip here when you're testing, I always, t I always start off with remarketing. If that performs well, obviously that's a remarketing, meaning someone that has visited your website before. Um, if that performs well, that's generally good insight that prospecting would work well as well. Leveraging email and social media, I'm sorry, and uh, text messaging, SMS to close any gaps. So just, you know, making, basically squeezing every dollar out of that, everything, uh, all of your paid media efforts, you want to make sure you squeeze everything out of it. So if they abandon cart or whatever the case is, they don't convert at first click, um, just make sure you follow up by email and SMS, and also you'll have remarketing campaigns running. Um, just You just wanna close any gaps, really. Here's an example that I got earlier today from Steve Madden. I'm gonna buy some shoes later. Uh, retargeting, retargeting, you know, everyone loves retargeting, it's absolutely crucial. So as you build up your traffic, just go heavy with retargeting, meaning uh, you increase your budget during the week of the actual promo. So you know, right before you're building, you're building, you're building traffic, and then you go heavy with retargeting. That's usually my strategy. I actually, on the week of the promotion, and or two weeks, depending on how long we run, 50% of my budget is going to retargeting. The other 50 is going to prospecting. Um, 
also when it comes to retargeting specifically for e-commerce i always segment out my retargeting audiences there's a difference between someone who uh, you know just went to your website and then they kind of bounced versus someone who added their payment information uh, and then bounced uh, or added to cart or cart abandoner and then bounced so you know, if your margins allow, go ahead and, you know, add some promo stacking. So anyone that viewed your product but didn't actually purchase gets hit with an ad uh, to drive home the sale, additional 10% off plus the promotion that we're running. And um, I think I mentioned this before, but if you run any holiday gift guides or awareness campaign, every, retarget everyone, you know, or if you're running um, any, uh, if you created any holiday blog posts, retarget everyone that visited that one page hit them with an ad, you know, a direct to sale ad, because uh, you already warmed them up with your uh, branding efforts or your top of funnel efforts. And, you know, overall, just people want to buy more so than ever. So regardless of what it is that you sell, digital products, coaching, et cetera, you know, credit cards are hot. So just think about the ways you can really capitalize that, on that. Hopefully this gave you some ideas um, and some strategies to implement ASAP. Uh, and I would say everyone has an opportunity here, not just uh, e-commerce. And uh, that's all folks.